वही लोग गा सकते हैं जिनके अच्छे ख्याल और अच्छे जज्बात All right, Kirit mate. You fire me off. Huh? Fire me off. What are we talking about? We're talking about how well you're matched today. How well I'm matched. Your style, your shirt. Yeah. Looking good. I do try. I do try. <laughs> This is tailored, tailored. Actually? Yeah. From India. I think this material is from Rajasthan. No, no, no. Calcutta, Calcutta. Right. Right. No, but everything I wear is this trousers from India. Yeah. Shirts from India, Bangladesh yeah. from India. Except you're a Gora. Yeah. The famous Gora that does Gita. That has no name. Gora Singh. The Gora Singh. The Gora Singh. I was telling you that like, every five months you go viral on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. And you, ne- you never have a name. Yeah. And it's a different Shabad. Yeah. But it's always the Gora that <laughs> sings. I'm pretty sure there's only one clip of me that keeps getting circulated again and again. <laughs> it's not a different Shabad. <laughs> it's the same one. The one where you're wearing the chant? Yeah. 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 That's the one. green Pagadi and the... Yeah. And that What Shabad is that? I forgot. I can't remember. I can't remember the show. I just remember, remember the, the caption. It's always the caption. It's always yeah. different. It's like... And people always sending me the same clip. <laughs> I just get fed up. Like, <laughs> And it's also Karambi's fault. <laughs> like, he, uplo- he uploaded that clip on DGN. Yeah. Without yeah. like sending me, oh, can I upload this clip? You know, no, he just like yeah. threw up a clip and it's like a shitty alarp. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even a good clip. It's always like, look at this Gora Singh and Sade Bande Nashe Kaar Reh Apu Javcha. <laughs> And that, well, actually, I should make that clear that you can understand Punjabi fully and speak it. You can read and write Gurmukhi. You can read and write um, Urdu as well. And you can read and write uh, Hindi. Yeah. What else? Tell me more. Uh, It's insane, man. I mean, languages... I speak a few, like, conversational European languages. A bit, right. of, bit of French, a bit of Portuguese. Right. Um, but... Uh, Yeah, the only reason I, you know, being to India, learning learning with Guruji in Pune, you get Hindi, conversational Hindi, and then it was only for the research that I decided I need to, you know, seriously be able to read all this literature. Otherwise, how are you going to figure out what the history is? You know, sometimes getting books written in Urdu, sometimes in Hindi, sometimes in Gurmukhi Punjabi. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I took formal courses in Hindi, uh, Farsi. I can read a bit Farsi. Um, and then Urdu, I just kind of learn from a book. It's insane, man. That's actually insane. <laughs> no, but I, th- I think people, you know, th- that was the norm. People forget. Yeah. Like if you go back 100 years yeah. in Punjab, every Tom, Dick and Harry was reading Urdu, writing Urdu. Not every, you know, there's a big illiterate populace we as well. A different, we need a different, you can't, you can't say Tom, Dick and Harry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like, Tanvir, <laughs> Davinder and... Karanvir. Yeah, Karanvir. Uh, yeah. yeah. But, you know, okay, there was a large kind of village uh, population which were illiterate. Yeah. But people who lived in the cities, mer- you know, uh, merchants, traders, they were all most likely literate in Urdu and Gurmukhi. And they were they could speak Urdu, they could speak Hindi, they could speak uh, Punjabi. And if you look in religious contexts... A lot of the old Mahants, the Nirmala and the Udasi Mahants, they would have a working knowledge of Sanskrit as well. They would have a working knowledge of Farsi, sometimes Arabi also. So I think we've become used to just like, oh, it's just Punjabi, you know, and we can only just about manage one or two languages, you know. But the human capacity is far greater than what we think, yeah. you know. And, and if, if if that culture was there where you grown up, you're grown up, and you're taught these things when you're young, it's just then, easy. Then it's you easy, know, I've yeah. put in the effort later, but it's still possible. Why not? Yeah. You know, I, I'm not fluent in all these languages, but I can, I've got a working knowledge of them. Yeah, and I can t- I can testify, because I've seen you read all the kind of government propaganda that's Kashmiri up, propaganda, uh, yeah, 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 and yeah, that's up yeah. in Pakistan right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, so can, it comes in useful. <laughs> yeah, it does come in useful. There was a, um, what was it, yesterday, two days ago, we were walking around the walled city of Lahore, and... Um, There was, in their newspaper, they had announced that the Khalistani currency has been officially, officially launched released. and the passport. Yeah, launched and the passport has been launched. And the passport is ready. Yeah. yeah. And so every shopkeeper was like, oh, Sadar Ji, to di da, aaj di di, currency je launch ho gi je. Yeah. And then the passport's launched. They're running and after us with the akhbar. Yeah. Yeah. Take this, take this, take this. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. It's insane over here. Now the propaganda is serious here. Yeah. Yeah. And the uh, Bharat ki barbaad di. 
yeah. कश्मीर की आजादी पाकिस्तान में पाकिस्तान uh stuff is is it's uh it's bad it's pretty serious serious level of propaganda here yeah and it's everywhere it's actually just everywhere and everyone has the same talking points and everyone the thing is there's there's real what feels like real kind of hate for hindus like yeah 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 like everyone I'm, seems to you uh, I mean we we both had this experience because we've been here i've been here with you for almost 3 weeks now yeah and you've been you were here about 4 or 5 days before i oh, know we Yeah, four week, five days before. Yeah, that. just so you've been here yeah. about four, almost four weeks. I've been here about almost three weeks, something like that. Yeah, and so we spent a lot of time meeting people from Lahore, and everyone has the same same want, story. They, yeah, same story. They want to be your friend, but they want to be your friend via mutual hatred for, for, for Hindus. Hindus, and yeah. they're not. Um, they don't hide it really. No, no, and it, they have this kind of a a. There's the you know this the feeling that they're trying hard to be friendly. and they're all they've all been kind of indoctrinated to go take the extra step say you know i had one cab uh, a cab trip with the taxi driver at the end of the trip he was like ne aapke liye free hai and i could see it's like it's very he, common he was not even being like he was just doing it out of because someone had told him to do it yeah and then i was like ne aisa nahi hai i just gave him the money and he's like okay yeah <laughs> and then he kind of like he didn't like, like it wasn't it wasn't genuine otherwise yeah. he would have like said ne 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 paaji mein ne you know yeah. but he he was um he was just doing it because he was forced to he felt forced to do that you know yeah. for yeah. a westerner i have to give a good impression yes that's which very is, common here as well which is it's some sort of it's, it's like a form of patriot uh, like that's how they think they're being patriotic yeah mm. and it's somewhat this i mean it's nice yeah that you get positive treatment but mm. given that you can see through that yeah it makes it like slightly uncomfortable you know it's yeah. like why are you doing this just because you're trying extra you know yeah there is a genuine love and pr as well here you know yep there's the other day I was in the supermarket and this this guy i heard this guy walking behind me he was like he was talking to his son he's like sardar <laughs> and then um and then like they're following me following me i was i was walking around the aisle he said oh sardar sardar and then eventually he goes sardar ji <laughs> turn around and this is massive guy really tall guy like really fair skinned like he looked like he come from the afghani border side, yeah. side and he just he just looked at me and he smiled big massive guy he's like sadaji kapala de kapala de no no give me a hug yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i was like chill up give me a hug and he just squeezed me so tight and he wouldn't let me go <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i think we sh- and it's like that was a genuine yeah. moment they were really happy you know yeah and i think we should clarify because we've been here for 3 weeks so we just jumped into you know uh, kind of talking about that uh, you know the all the propaganda and stuff like that but there is a genuine like for six years well yeah like more so than anywhere else where yeah. uh, everyone seems to be really I, i don't know where they all seem to have fun it it's like they have fun memories of six or something yeah and i think the other thing that's really genuine is their appreciation of mother and jeet singh Yes. I feel like that is something they're not putting on because every interaction I have in Nasr I went to the Lahore Museum as well and the lady there that was curating a, uh, a an exhibition for Sikhs and stuff like that. That seems to be genuine mm. because they what everyone keeps saying is Mohan Singh was the only Punjabi that ruled over Punjab. Yeah. And they love that idea and the fact that he ruled like the majority were Muslim population and he ruled yeah. in such a fair manner and then they have all these you know anecdotes about him and how he ruled and all this kind of stuff. and that feels genuine i think that extends by extension they also love sikhs yes and i think yes. that's kind of the snowball effect that's happening that in in the kind of ancestral memory they yeah. have this great reverence for maran jit singh yes and as a consequence of that they really do genuinely love the sikhs yeah um yeah. but i feel like just maybe india's playing games and pakistan's playing games and they're just kind of playing on people's uh, 
uh, insecure, like religious insecurities almost. Yeah. And being like, you know, you know what they're like. And India's like, you know what they're like. And yeah, yeah. no one actually knows what each other's it's like. It. Yeah, yeah. Everyone just wants to. No, so, I mean, so that I, has to be clarified that people here mm. have are quite. Yeah. Know, very and nice. A lot of people have been saying like, oh, we watch films from India with like yeah. the, the films of, about where it features Sardars, you know. Yeah. There was so much interest then, um, uh, because they, because they, there's such a small population here of Sikh community that, um, they just like, whenever they see a Sikh, they're kind of curious, they're interested, like, oh, I want to talk to him. And, and when they see films, they watch it to to learn more about, because they actually don't know much about Sikhism anymore. The new generations, they have very little knowledge, like, which is two generations ago. It was like everyone was living together and they knew about each other's traditions. And I think that's the, one of the, damaging things about the separation. Well, we went to yeah. Lahore Fort. Mm. It was you, myself, Indipreet and Nathan. Yeah. Was Karanvi there? No, Karanvi had left already. Karanvi. He had left. No, he wasn't there. Yeah. It was us four. Yes. And it was 30 minutes of selfies. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. yeah, we yeah. Outside waiting. the fort. Yeah, 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 outside the fort. People yeah. just would not. Someone, someone handed me their baby for God's sake. <laughs> that was funny. And then I'm holding the baby and it's been three weeks since I've seen my kid, you know, Prem, and I'm just sitting there like remembering Prem holding this kid. But I was like, Jesus Christ, like he just gave me his baby and then he ran back and got a camera and he said, I need to take a photo of my baby with a Sardar. Yeah, yeah. And then what was funny was he took he took the baby away after the photo. Yeah. And he also wanted me to show affection to the baby. It wasn't just I yeah. want to take a photo. He wanted me to hold the baby and play a little yeah, bit like yeah. I'm, you know, from the royal family visiting <laughs> science. Like, yeah, all right, okay, you want me to kiss him on the forehead? Like, what do you want me to do? Yeah. And I handed him his baby back and and twenty minutes later when we finally got over all the photos, because no one would, would yeah. stop. Yeah. And th- they were more obsessed with Indipreet than myself, than you and Nathan, that, that was which is I the found, opposite. That was what I found really interesting. Because yeah. me, you know, being a regular yeah. frequenter of India, yeah. um, I always get, you know, loads of attention just being a Gora and then being a Gora Sardar at the same time. Yeah. And especially in Punjab, like people yeah. just like, party, party, self-feeling, self-feeling. And then um, here, I was shocked that like, no one, no one was particularly interested in me. It's like, no. These guys, yeah. you guys are like the real, yeah. <laughs> the real Sikhs. Yeah, the hierarchy went, like, the, the Indipreet and I. Yeah. Then, Nathan. Then, then, no, 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 I don't think so. Then it went to you, okay, not okay. because you're white, but because you have a daddy and okay, a pug. Okay. Mm. And then Nathan. And Nathan just is like as white as you get. Yeah, yeah. Which would be in India, gold, pure gold for yeah, selfies. Yeah, yeah. It's true. And, but here it's the opposite. They care about yeah. they they're, yeah. they're kind of, I don't know. No, that, that was, that caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting yeah. that. And that guy took his baby back. Yeah. And, 25 minutes later, 20, 25 minutes later, when we was the entire time, not, while we were waiting for this guy to come out of the fort to show us the fort, people kept coming, taking selfies and blah, 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 blah. And this guy, I, I saw him as we were walking off. He was coming back with another kid. Achha. Yeah, you didn't see him. Another toddler, this, the, or like a toddler or, or like, a, I think it was a baby, but he was coming back with a different baby. Right, and right. this time he didn't want a photo with me. He wanted a photo with Indipreet. He's like, <laughs> I want my other baby to have the photo with the other Sardar. Other Sardar yeah. But uh, by that time we had to go inside. So we, we couldn't go. But it, yeah. it's a weird experience. I feel like if you come here for three or four days, yeah. which I, I came in 2017. Yeah. Before I came for four days with, with Kieran. Mm. And when you come for three or four days, you have a different impression of the place because you 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 only see that side where it's just like, you know, yeah. Um, Everyone's really welcome and all that kind of stuff. And then when you stay for longer, obviously you kind of start to see what's get happening a in the politics. Sense, yeah. yeah, you get you get a better sense of the pulse of the city and the pulse of the people and stuff like yeah. that. Um, but I mean, overall, overall, it's been a good trip. Yeah, yeah, no, very good. It's been I think, good. Uh, despite the current political climate, you know, yeah, it, it hasn't really impacted much. It just means you're getting, you know, people trying to. Uh, talk to you about the issue a lot. Yeah, everyone, everyone. Wants to, everyone wants to just talk about Kashmir, Kashmir, Kashmir and how Khalistan is supporting Kashmir and this yeah. is supporting Kashmir and yeah. Pakistan's going to support Khalistan. And yeah, all they keep trying. saying that. Like yeah. they, the, the thing is, they think ev- all Sikhs think like in the Khalistan is good. Like, yeah, every, they just, every, every single person that comes up to me that talks about Kashmir is like, oh, gee, I was like, you know what? Um, Khalistan aside, if you want to, you don't want it, that aside. And my personal whatever input on that aside. But they just think that everyone thinks the same. Mm. And they expect every, like this, it feels like everyone thinks the same here. Yeah. And they think that's exactly how the countries think. There's not, there's not really kind of diversity of opinion or, Exactly. Like that. it's, really that's sad. That's it for me. Sad. That's sad, and that's why I've been, I've been 
tried on a few occasions telling people that men ate on the Khalistan. Yeah. And then they're like, you can see the shock in their face. Sure. Yeah, like, it's like, what, you're a Sikh? What's wrong with you? Yeah. It's like, literally, they're thinking, what's wrong with you? I was like, what's the benefit of Khalistan? You know, you're creating separation. You, by creating Pakistan, what, have, what has benefited Pakistan? Nothing. They've lost, the culture's lost, the separation. You've, you only have separation division, which creates damage on the culture, you know? So yeah. I've tried to make that point, but then I've decided I'm not going to go into it anymore because no, it's not, people, because people can't understand it here. No, people can't fathom difference of opinion. No. They can't. Uh, they can't step out of it. Yeah, and then be like, okay, this is what this person's thinking. This is this is their kind of justification for and their this thought process. No, it's not like that. It's like this is a talking point. Yeah, and if this person's against this talking point, this is the rebuttal you give. Yes, and that those that those are the two things you have: your talking point and your rebuttal. Your your rebuttal to someone disagreeing with your talking point. Nothing yeah, else it. exists. Yeah. True. Nothing else Very exists. True. Very true. But I mean, that's what it is. Yeah. But. I mean, we just digressed a lot. We didn't digress, but we, we didn't talk about, you know, music or anything like that. But we, like, I know you from music. That's that's, that's our connection. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure you still, you still remember, but do you remember how we met? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like a romantic moment. Do you remember how we met, Keith? That night? It was, it was, actually it was a romantic moment. <laughs> I remember sitting in the ITC SRE. In Calcutta. In Calcutta. The ITC SRE uh, recital hall, small auditorium that they have. It was a Wednesday evening, I think, when the Starry night. when the vertex happened, yeah. And uh, I can't remember who was. Maybe you remember who was singing. I can't was remember. Was it Alec? Was it Alec? It might might have been Alec. I maybe. can't remember. I can't, I can't remember. remember. Anyway, I was sitting there, and then. Or Brojo. Was it Brojo singing Sri Rag? I maybe I, I was gonna say Alec singing Sri Rag, but I feel like it was either Brojo or Alec. I think. So. I remember Brojo singing Sri Rag in the recital. It could yeah, be that one. It could have been, yeah. Um. Yeah, you would have probably come to see here, Brojo, actually. I just we just came to see By ITC. Chance. We'd never been to ITC, right? That was your first time. Yeah, first time no to way. ITC and first time, and we like we'd rather see the recital, right? That's yeah, yeah. that's I don't. That's a coincidence. I didn't realize that your first time. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, so I was just sitting there, and then in the corner of my eyes, I see these two sadars walk in at the back, <laughs> and I was like, "What? What are these guys doing here? You know, get <laughs> Yeah. And then uh, um, we had the same thing. We're like, well, this guy. One, he's got a pug on his head. Yeah. And if you have a pug on your head and you listen to classical music, that's a rarity in itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otto, like, this guy looks white. <laughs> it's like, white guy with a pug on his head listening to classical music. Like, I was just, we were just so confused, but at the same time, we were so happy because in Kolkata, that's the same thing. Like, in the Britain, we just look for, like, home everywhere we go. Yeah. And you don't find home. Yeah, like, this place is all, I'm kind of good. To, I'm so ready to go home now. Mm. But um, when we saw you, it was like, oh, okay, you know? Mm. Sardar. <laughs> yes. And so we're just waiting for the recital to finish and we're just like, we need to talk to this guy. Yeah. And, then, and then the guy finished. And then basically, for those who don't know, ITC is in Kolkata. It has a history of pretty much being the most prestigious kind of music academy uh, in Kolkata. In the ho- I, I say one of the, in the whole of India. In the whole of India. Yeah. yeah. It has a huge kind of very impressive history. Yeah. yeah. And the prestige of the names that have come out of the academy. Yeah. yeah. Like Rashid Khan, Ajoy Chakraborty, I mean, big names. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And all those stars that were there and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. 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 Huge names. So this, this, w- that's where this was. And they have a recital hall and they do this thing for those that don't know. They, they have a Wednesday recital every night, I think 6 p.m. or something. So if you go to Kolkata, yeah. you should go there yeah and they have a small room and then probably a hundred people do you think a hundred people can fit in that room yeah, um, yeah. if it's a hundred is kind of like yeah the room's pretty full the room's full yeah. yeah so like a max of a hundred people can yeah. fit so it's quite a small room intimate with the intimate room it's mm. got good sound mm. and you get the like the atmosphere is nice Emphasis, M- my guruji good. used to tell me that when he used to sing there because he also went to ITC he was there for a little bit my guruji oh okay yeah yeah, 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 yeah he was yeah, there for yes, a little yes, bit yes, yes, yes. and he was describing a different atmosphere he was like all the gurus would sit on the ground you know how the gurus right now, you, you barely have any gurus that attend. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And yeah. they sit at the back on the chair. Yeah. But he was, I forgot the guru's name. I think it was Rashidji's, nothing, Nisarusen. Vijay Kichlu, the no, guys? No, Nisar, nothing, maybe. Nisarusen. Yeah, yeah, maybe Nisarusen. But he was saying these guys were sitting at the front. And then he, he's like, they would applaud your attempts. Not sure. Yeah. So he was like, if you tried something yeah. that was, you know, of substance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They would go, wa bete. Acha koshish kiya, wa bete, like that. Okay, okay, okay. And you're getting that from Nisaru Senka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Said that was the, the kind of atmosphere. So it was very encouraging. Right now, it's kind of, the music scene's kind of turned into more of a uh, reproduction of 
of so you know people aren't really trying yeah because what, what used to happen is you get to this level which is you know the study kind of level mm. and then you start to see what you can do you know? yeah yeah so, and he was describing that kind of atmosphere that, you know, they'll start sitting at the front. And he's not applauding your execution. More so because it's that intimate the atmosphere. The kind of bravery of the bravery attempting of your, something. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that was, you know, yeah. a different kind of... I never heard that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was also describing a moment where he sang a Meg Vilambit and Pandit Gyan Prakash Ghosh. He, he came up to him afterwards and he wanted that composition. So oh, wow. that interaction. Mm. Where everyone was just there to learn. Mm. And kind of push each other up yeah I mean no, I, I think that the atmosphere is still there right. like even what Guruji tells me uh, about yeah, Guruji is Ode, which is Pandit Ode Walkar, yeah, yeah yeah so he's one of the he's one of the resident uh, gurus at the ITCS SRA alongside Pandit Ajoy Chakrabarti Pandit Nikhil Banerjee you know uh, Nikhil Banerjee uh, sorry sorry Partho Chatterjee yeah uh, <laughs> Um, <laughs> Everyone's gonna be like Nick Benji. You still like <laughs> hiding out in ITC. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah, re- recently um, many of the other gurus have. Uh, Ula- Pandit Ulas Krishalka is still a guru, but uh, resident in Pune, and other gurus have passed away recently. And so the atmosphere has changed a little bit. But Guru told me that you know once once he came to the SRA, he said he's, he learned so much since being there because of the interactions between disciplines. You know, between instrumentalists, between Khayal singers and Drupad singers and between greats, you know, the, the current cu- current greats of the scene, you've got after a recital, like you're saying, after a recital, exchange of compositions like, uh, you know, Ajoyji would come up to Guruji after after um, my Guru Bhai Sagar and Prasanna sang uh, uh, one of Guruji's compositions and you say, Odeji, ye mujhe chahiye ye composition, bohat, bohat hai, you yeah. know. Yeah. So there's that in- in exchange, there's that intellectual uh, interchange between yeah. the greats there so the atmosphere is phenomenal and I've not seen anywhere else in the whole of India I, for me ITC SRA is one of the uh, it's a kind of a model of how Hindustani music can go forward yeah. blending the institutional uh, mm. you know educational institution environment yeah. which is a western model for education like having a kind of curriculum or a three year course and a kind of timeline and a, 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 a more uh, contained format of education as as opposed to the totally random you know supposedly random and free oral tradition of the guru shishya parampara which is can take as long as it takes and it's when your start gives you time then you learn and so it I, for me the sra blends those two in a really nice way there's very little uh, curriculum forced upon the students you don't have to learn uh, you don't have to read tons of books you know the focus is around the guru and the shishya having a, a close relationship all the scholars live on site the gurus mostly live on site if the guru lives off site then the scholars are provided resources to go and stay near the guru you know and it facilitates that traditional learning method in a modern yeah. environment in a really nice way and and then the atmosphere like i say is really phenomenal because you have regular performances you hear the scholars i learned so much you know being there mm-hmm. uh for months at a time because you you every week you're hearing other young people that kind of they were well ahead of me, you know, but it forces you to like, oh, how, why are they better than me? And then you start to learn and start to pick off, pick up on why someone's performance is good, why it wasn't good, you know. Uh, and and that happens between the scholars and between the gurus and the musicians, all the people in between as well, you know. Yeah. So if the environment is is, you know, I've not been to all academies in India, but for me, uh, I found something special there, and, and uh, all the people that have spent time there, the gurus that are there, they they acknowledge like we learn so much from each other. Yeah. And I mean, the students that come out of there uh, yeah. are, are kind of proof of that. Yeah, it's pr- proofs in the pudding, you know? Yeah. You And you're having Ustad Rashid Khan coming out of there. Your Guruji's come out of there, you know? Pandit yeah. uh, Ajoy uh, Chakrabarti who went out of there and then came back as a guru there. Yeah. It's big, big names. And um, even now, the, the guys that are coming out, uh, yeah, Ayan, you know, playing fantastic sitar. Yeah, You've got like, really good yeah. uh, Devoshri and uh, yeah, they're Brajoda. Singing, yeah. These guys are singing really, really well. Yeah. Yeah, it, I mean the 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 thing is, I think it gets a bit of slack because people like to talk crap, you know. Yeah, yeah people yeah. want something negative to talk yeah, about. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like the kind of minimum standard ITC is like a performance standard. Exactly. You, you have to keep that in mind. Yeah, people in India, want, people know they can like we can just take any of the scholars of ICC, and SRA and he will perform, yes, and it's going to be good. Yes, exactly. You can pick a scholar from SRA, put him on stage, and yeah. they'll um, 
they'll they'll give you a yeah, kind yeah. of a performance like a standard level of performance. Yeah, and the other thing is to bear in mind for the scholars when they have their gradations once a year they perform. Yeah, they perform in front of the all the gurus. So all the gurus come sit at the back. It's really in, like intimidating. Who who else? If you're just learning off your star in somewhere in uh, Banaras, you know you got an, you found an star that a guru and you're learning, and then you're progressing and you have the vidya and everything, but if you have to perform in front of like the greatest names and not only do they put the gurus there, they invite Rajan Sajan Mishraji, they'll invite, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, all the great singers of the times to come uh, and give you critique. And then that's your, that shows your progress every year. You know, you have to, you have to go through that. That's, that's like a, a grilling. That's a grilling in front of like yeah. the big names. So it's a, it's a, it's a serious institution. Yeah. And we uh, we met there when like do you remember the year twenty twelve or something? Yeah, I was trying to think. Uh, two thousand, no, not two thousand twelve. Two thousand twenty thirteen, twenty fourteen. It wouldn't be been after twenty fourteen, I think. Thirteen, maybe. Thirteen, maybe. Yeah. Thirteen or fourteen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we we met, and then we went for cha outside. It was you, your good boy Sagar He yeah. was with us. He was with us already. Yeah. And then it was Masafir and Lipri. There was four of us, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. we had good cha. Yeah, we went out for tea after the recital and then we came back. No, no, we had... Oh, we went to Chinese. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember now. Chinatown. Was it? That was good food. I think it was, yeah, 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 Chinatown. Yeah. We had a chow mein and uh, yeah. a or whatever it was. Yeah, and then we be- went back to the uh, residence. Yeah, because sang- I, I had no idea about how good you guys were at the time. I was just learning. That was like, I'd been there for maybe a couple of weeks. I just kind of started my Drupad kind of journey. And it was the first time that I was spending kind of long time with Guruji. Um, and then I, I, I met you guys for the first time. I didn't know. You mentioned like, oh, we're learning of Shantanu Bhattacharya. I was like, Bhattacharya, some other Bengali. I, don't, I didn't know who this guy was at the time. And so uh, he was like, let's go back. Cause you guys were like really keen and like, let's go back. We'll, sing, let's sing, we'll sit down. We'll, we'll sit something. down. Yeah, yeah. We, we're always keen to sit yeah, down. Yeah. And, yeah. So you guys we came back to the, our room, Sagarbhai. I think, I can't remember. Did you ask Sagarbhai to sing something first? Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, you guys were like really big on Darbari at the time, I remember. Yeah, huge on that, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Indipreet was like, oh, it's got to be Darbari. So, um, the other thing was we wanted to, I'll tell you, what, I'll tell you like what, why we wanted to hit Darbari specifically. Yeah. Because we never had an, like an intimate interaction with a Drupa, someone from the Drupa tradition. Mm. And obviously Drupa tradition focuses more on like the Andolan and all this kind of, that kind of stuff where mm. you're like, this is the, we don't focus on that too much. Like, Bharat Gulamali Khan Sahib in, in an interview has also said, ki, ka gana to besura gana bhi like, people are saying they're singing Shruti, yeah. but they're just singing Besura. Yeah. So, like, yeah. yeah, guy, it's like, yeah. kid, a guy, he's, he sings like this and makes, you know, he's yeah, yeah, yeah. having a jab at it. Yeah, yeah. But we, we, we didn't have that kind of attitude. But what I'm saying is that we were like, really, we wanted to hear a vocalist. Because on the on a on a on a stringed instrument, it's much easier to produce those um, kind of precise shrutis. Yeah. But we were like, okay, if it's a druba, if it, if you guys do, we wanted to hear your approach mm. to the body, and we were like, we were so excited to yeah, to yeah. sit down and we're like, okay, this is going to be exciting because we'll get an insight into and we get to learn from that. Yes. Yeah. You know, the, uh, everything's about learning. Yeah. At the end of the day, and so we we'll, we get to learn from like how you you or Sagar by whoever would sing would also approach the body because yeah. how we approach the body would be different but we wanted to see how the Drupad person yeah. would approach the Ga and yeah. approach the Dha that kind of yeah. that kind of thing yeah yeah. Now yeah. I remember sang, Sagar Bhai sang full up yeah. and uh, I remember after hearing it you guys were like it's different <laughs> no, no, no it wasn't like that it was really good <laughs> no I, I remember you appreciated it but um, because it, the approach is very different you know uh, and then you guys sang the body as well yeah we just chimed in Remember, we, we sang yeah, together. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So it was like yeah. Sagar Bhai. Yeah. Were you singing? You didn't no, sing. I was on Sarangi. You did play Sarangi. Yeah, at the time I was you playing Sarangi. You know, Sarangi has a recording of that? Acha. Yeah. I don't know where, but that guy, that guy does never loses anything. Mm. So he has a recording from 2014 of you of you playing Sarangi. Mm. In the Pritha Nai singing Darbari. Acha, acha. And Sagar Bhai singing Darbari. Yeah. So like a Drupad Kyal yeah. Darbari. I mean, I'm sure, sure it sounds horrendous now. I had no know. idea what the body was at the time. But yeah, anyway. well, I mean, I was telling you, I've stopped singing the body. Yeah. Because yeah. it's just like, a, I think you need to wait till, I'm not going to put an age on it because people end up, you know, 
people interpret that the wrong way that you're being elitist yeah. like you need to be 60 years old before you can be yeah you can't put it's a, not a, like a time on it but no, it's, there it, is a maturity that's required exactly. for certain rocks and yes. the body is one of those definitely rocks. one of those rocks where yeah. yeah you can sing it with the Ari and you can sing the patterns but to get to the soul of that rock mm. and not to sing it like a gimmick mm. uh, you need yeah you need to put you need time up your you know up your yeah sleeves. you need time and reals and like that's the rug that needs introspection and sad like the kind of introspection that comes through uh, extensive sadhana yes yeah. that kind of introspection that's what the body demands before yeah. it's like you can you can sing me but you need to spend the years in sadhana first yeah and then the introspection that will be gifted to you through sadhana with that you can you can attempt yeah but yeah. but no but i still remember you guys sing sang really well no, no, and no, i was no, really no. like because i had no idea what to expect yeah. And I was just like really taken aback. I was like, wow, these guys, I've not heard. That was the first time I thought, wow, there's some Sardars that are doing music seriously. <laughs> that was first, literally the first time. Yeah. And I was really like, it, it was kind of like really um, a joyful moment for me yeah. to hear hear you guys singing so well. Um, yeah. And then it was many years till we met again. Yeah. But I mean, first of all, you're being too kind. I need to, and I need to reciprocate that because I do enjoy your singing a lot as well. Yeah. And I think, it's it's really rare that you find people that are taking Tabla is really growing now Tabla is yeah, yeah. really growing there's a solid scene yeah. Is it, there's a solid scene amongst the Sikhs yeah so a lot of young Sikhs have, singing isn't isn't like that singing no. is not like that no. for whatever reason yeah people aren't learning and and, uh, and singing I have theories why I think instrumentals because that's the same thing with strings there's heaps of heaps of good Dildura players coming up you know the yard, yeah. the players. Yeah, you can you can kind of start getting into nitty gritty and being yeah. like, um, their talim isn't doesn't agree with my th- that kind of stuff. Talking about people that are focusing on tayari and getting tayar. Yeah, it's getting skill on the instrument. Getting yeah. skill on the instrument. Yeah. There's strings. We're getting a lot of dilruba players like that. Yeah, we're getting a lot of um, percussionists. Yeah, it's just not happening with vocalists. Vocalists, it's yeah. just not happening. Yeah, and I think. What's I your mean, theory on that? I think it's because, and I'm, this is no kind of. I'm not saying anything negative about instrumentalists, but I think there's a, it's a safety to being an instrumentalist because you adopt the voice of the instrument. Mm. You, the thing with, because I play, I learned Dilruba mm. and uh, I don't play it anymore. I focus solely on, on, on singing, but there's a reason why the harmonium was adopted because it's, you press the key. What the harmonium is, is to the string instrument. The string instrument is to the voice. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, the harmonium, you press a key and it has a tone. Yeah. The string instrument, you spend the first, after a year, you get, you, the screeching goes away. Yeah. And you've got a tone on the vo- on the instrument. Yeah. I cannot play Dilruba for six years, but because I previously played it, I can hold sa and I'll get, I won't get screechiness, I'll get some sound out of it. Yeah. You know I mean? And the voice isn't like that. Yeah. The voice is, it needs consistent work. Yeah. And consistent reals. Yeah. And otherwise, it it's as if, it, it's it's as if, if you were a Dilruba player, and if you left your Dilruba for four days, the instrument started to decay. Mm. That's what the voice does. Yeah. The voice just starts to decay. Like you, if you open your Dilruba box up after six months and it's just turned into dust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what the voice is like. Whereas the instrument, that's why you see like Shiv Kumar Sharmaji, Amjad Ali Khan, these, these artists well into their kind of 70s and 80s. And keep, yeah, keep, yeah. they sound, they got such beautiful tonal quality. Yeah. Um, which doesn't, doesn't really retain... It doesn't re- translate to vocalists. Yeah, it's true. And I think that, I mean, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it, but that's my kind of theory about it. That I think that because of that reason, yeah, uh, it's a little bit easier to do that. It's harder to find your voice. Yeah. It's easier to f- adopt the voice of an instrument. Yeah, yeah. No, I'd agree. I think I think the vocal... Wait, wait, I need to clarify because if people, people don't know, you're a really good stringy player as well. So that's the background you're talking from. Yeah, I mean, I don't really play stringy anymore. I haven't touched touched the instrument for a long time. But uh, yeah, I, I played it for many years because I was, you know, fascinated by the sound of it. It's, I think it's one of the richest kind of tonal quality of the sound instrument. It kind of, it's just so rich. It's close to the voice, you know. Um, but I also found that there was no, not as much satisfaction in playing the sarangi as there is in, when singing. And I think that's that's one of the big differences, like, at the end of the day, the instrument is just an instrument. Okay, you, people say, oh, the instrument becomes part of you, it becomes one. But your voice is like, ultimately, it is you. To, for me, it's a, it's a very spiritual thing as well, because if you, if you 
have a sense of your identity, how do you, you know, how do you relate to yourself? How do you communicate? How do you relate to the world? We, we communicate mostly through words, through our voice. So your voice is like, it's you. You know, it's hard to separate your voice from your identity. And um, yeah, a lot of people have kind of uh, different issues and baggage and about using the voice, you know, mental blocks and fear and this, all, all kinds of that stuff comes in. But that, which makes it harder to become a vocalist, to find your voice, to then do all the hard work with the voice. And, and like you say, it's not something which you can just uh, put it back and then come back a year later and then just pick it up again. It's like without doing the hard work, you can't use the voice as, it, as it's supposed to. It, you know, it's, it, it needs a sadhana, a continuous, regular sadhana. Yeah. So the voice is, it's, it's not, for me, it's on a different plane yeah. above instrumental. And Indian Hindustani music has always kept that notion of vocal being the highest yeah. of all musics yeah. and those instruments which are considered next in the hierarchy are the instruments which come closest to the voice sound so like bansuri sarangi you know some of the yeah, people instruments. are going to be like people are listening to me like of course two vocalists would say that no? yeah, yeah no but i'm just i'm just yeah, regurgitating what with hindustani that. music has yeah has has you I know the that. theory of hindustani music and i think i think we both come from an instrumental background as well yeah know? so this yeah. isn't something that we're and I do feel that that it is it is on a different plane in that sense. Yeah. You know? And many many instrumentalists got frustrated and moved to singing. That's another pattern. Yeah. You know, the Kirana Garana was many many instrumentalists that switched then to singing. Yeah. A, a they won't feel like they were getting the recognition. The status of instrumentalist was a lower, but there was a reason because the vocalist had more work. It's harder, and you, you know, so and you get more satisfaction I think from singing. So many Badi Gulam Ali Khan Sahib used to play instrumental. He moved Garana exponents. They moved to a vocal from instrumental. Um, and it's it's kind of a trend that you'll you'll observe, you know. Yeah. Even Pandit Ram Rain, I remember hearing his interview. Uh, there was a time when he switched to vo- vocal, <laughs> and then people said like, "Stop singing." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had to go back to Sarangi. Yeah. But uh, sometimes the, the, uh, an instrument is limiting. You know, you can't do everything that the yeah. voice can. And in terms of repertoire as well, right? There's how many yeah. guts can you, you know? Yeah. Whereas whereas just a simple. Simple bandish, a new bandish in the same rag that you've sung hundred times. Yeah. But the bandish, the what the words do to the bandish. Yeah. Yeah. It's like instrumental instruments are two D and vocal is three D. You know, yeah. the third dimension is the is the words, it's the words, which is just like a whole new world. Yes, exactly. So it can't. And I mean, Keithan is reliant on the words. Yeah. That's the yeah. central part of yeah. Keithan and the Sikh tradition. Yeah. Is the I mean that's everything revolves around the Gurbani. Yeah. And uh, so that's why it's a bit like you know. All, all, like there's a big resurgence kind of happening, but it's all an instrumental, and not in, not in yeah. vocal. I don't know. I mean, I don't know why. I I, I don't have any justification. Especially with Sikhs, you know, because Gurbani is the central. Yeah. You know. I think, I I always come back to the historical aspect of it and how just the culture for music has been damaged so much that okay, where where do you go to learn good vocal music for a start? That's that's an issue. You know, okay, you go, you can go outside, which is what we've done. You know, I'm learning from someone in Pune, Calcutta, you know, it's, uh, that's what one has to do, um, in order to get some of that, that, that caliber of music, you know, back. Um, but I'm sure now that's, that's not the only reason because you're right. If, if there's a popularity of instruments and instrumental music, why is it not happening in the vocal? Yeah. Cause there's, there's not exactly great instrumental of stars in, in, in Punjab specific, yeah. but more than vocal, you know, I think the whole music scene is pretty much the same level. Yeah. I think it comes back to the voice of the instrument and, the, and your voice, because in your voice, you can get a palta and then go crazy and do the palta. Mm. But at the end of the day, if you don't know how to, you know, your, how you, you need to formulate the, where the voice comes from, the mudra that you need to sing for the voice and all that kind of stuff, mm. it won't it will still sound terrible. It won't sound good. Whereas with an instrument, you can practice a, a, a palta enough times and it will sound good. Yeah, yeah. It will end up sounding good. Yeah. Um, then you're fine tuning it. But with a voice, like if you have a lisp, if, you, if you're not producing the voice, yeah. if you're not um, projecting the voice, there's 50 billion things. There's so many more variables, I guess. There's a lot yeah. more variables. Yeah. Um, that's probably it. But, I mean, you know when you were talking about ITC and mm. that culture, the entire time, what I was thinking of is like, why doesn't this exist in the six? Like, how, if only that what you were talking about, Ustad sitting at the back. Yeah. This culture of kind of 
an intellectual exchange in the arts. It just doesn't exist. Mm. And we kind of, I mean, people don't know, we were having dinner last night. Mm. And we chat, we, again, we just chat like this all the time. So we were chatting for like two, three hours of dinner. But we, we spoke, we touched on this as well, where you were kind of describing the colonial impact mm. and how that led to the kind of downfall of the art. Specifically, we can talk about music because yes. that's what I connect with. Yes, what we both. Yeah, but I mean, you, you, you do have a broader um, spectrum of, one, one, my understanding of music is not an academic one. Right. Mm. And, and it's a practical one it's a practical exactly. one exactly and I, I'm a musician mm. not a musicologist mm. not a researcher and I think musicians have a have, in today's well, well, like people expect everyone to be everything it's a bad approach mm. you should you, you should you want yeah, your musicologist that's a good point actually that's yeah. a very good point yeah. you want your musicologists to be damn good musicologists yeah. they don't have to be really good vocalists no. it's not their job yeah. but you want your musicians to be good musicians, mm. you don't you, you don't want them to be like uh, just just keep rattling off theory like you know people can come to me, come to me like acha dasam granche ke ne ragne we like that's not the fact that you ask that question as a metric yeah tells me that you just don't understand music yeah you just don't understand music yeah, yeah. um so that's something uh, your spectrum of of kind of uh, research is way wider than mine. Mm. I have a small, narrow wavelength. I have music, and then I have vocal music, and then I have the KL style. Yeah. So it's a very spectrum, and it's very kind of pointed, and that's yeah. that's how I, that's my approach. Yeah. Um. So and mine's a practical approach where I feel like I need to sing it. I don't. I'm not. It's not about theory for me. Yeah. It's about practical application because if if I if I can practically replicate it, only then can I can I sing it, pass it on, etc. It doesn't travel in books. Yeah. But yours is way wider than that. Mm. You're you're legitimately kind of working towards being a musicologist and a researcher and stuff. You're doing a PhD right now, so uh, that's what I was saying. I just want to clarify you. That's an that's a humble statement for you to put myself and you on the same plane in music. You know, no, so, but I, you know, it, as I always, you know, okay, they're related, but the way that I look at what I'm doing, you know, I'm ultimately I'm a student of music like you as well. You know, just pursuing Drupadi or pursuing Kial. And I, I look at it as we're in a similar boat, you know, um, in that respect. It's just that you got a day job and my day job is research kind of thing. And it, ha- right. it just so happens that because my passion is music, my research is related to the music, to the music you know. Yeah. But I, I, you know, they, they're related, but they're kind of two separate aspects. When I sit down to do Riyaz, I don't think about theory of music or my musicology cap. It's like two caps that I put on, yeah. if you like. Um, or two pugs. <laughs> yeah, you can't put toppies on. That's, what's the call? It's like seven, seven, yeah. seven j- janams in hell or something. You know that? You know what I'm talking about? Uh, I don't know. There's like a pankti, I think, I think, uh, there's a pankti that people like to, to uh, it's like if you wear a topi, you got seven, seven lives as like a oh, le- leper or something. I don't know. Yeah, something taken yeah, out something of context. Like. <laughs> something scary. Yeah, probably, yeah, most likely taken out of context and used to scare people. But, yeah, if you don't want to suffer for seven janams, mm. don't say topi. Chica. Say pugs. Pug. <laughs> and you so I've got my PhD pug on now. <laughs> the um, No, but the, the reason I got into the research initially is because it was around the, probably soon after we met, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd met Guruji in 2012 in a, in a workshop and I'd been playing Sarangi and I had an interest in Rag, Kirtan and that. And then I decided, wow, this is, I've never heard music like this, and I, I just decided I want to learn through put, and I want to learn from Pandit Dev Bahadur, you know. So that's that was going since 2012. We met in 2013 or 14, and then soon after, I was like, okay, I'm learning Drupad now. I'd quit my job, you know. I was a, I was a software engineer for one of the U- Europe's top five hedge funds. So it was powerful enough for me to decide that, you know, I'm fed up with programming. I don't want to do that. Really, it's not something which I I feel is my calling in life. So I, I decided this is music is really touching me. I want to do this. But then the question comes, okay, is that enough? You know, uh, I, I starting very late in life it is I might, I might not become a, a, a drippled singer and start singing professionally, you know? So the idea came and I'd always had questions growing up as a teenager, you know, learning Sarangi and learning Rag Kirtan's like, why is this not happening in the Gurdwaras? Why do you not hear this? Why did it change? When did it change? Where's the, where's the books that have my, answers to them, my questions you know 
And there was no, there was no books. There was no answers to the questions. There was no research. So it was kind of a natural follow on um, from my journey to that led me into this academic, historical, musicological research process. I did a master's in 2016 and then start the PhD in uh, 2018. And um, it's, it's just because I, I genuinely had questions and I just found no answers. And someone said, oh, well, you, you know, you're, you're, you're academically quite, you know, uh, inclined, academically inclined. Why don't you do a PhD in, the, in musicology, something related to that? And um, yeah, so it just, I just felt like once I'd taken a step out of this programming world and things just seem to align, you know, and I, I'm a believer in that whatever is meant to be your destiny or whatever is, it will happen, you know. And um, yeah, I'm fortunate that I had the a good advice from different directions that took me into the academic world um, that started this research process and been going for, you know, f f since about almost four or five years now. And uh, it's it just uncovers so much because once you go into history, you have to have a contextual history, you know, and this is why, like what you're saying with this idea of a wider kind of knowledge base. You have to go into that because, well, why did the music change? You have to understand what was happening. We're talking about Sikh music. Okay, what was happening in Sikhism at the time? Okay, why is, what, Sikh, what's happening in Sikhism at the time is in India, is in Punjab. What was happening in Punjab was well, the colonial period. Then you have to start, you just have to start, you know, just like no end. Then where do, where do you stop reading, you know, yeah. to understand the whole uh, picture and build an image of like what was going on at that time in the people's heads yeah. that led to these decisions being made and uh, the decline of music. And, you know, to come to, the, to this idea of why music declined, you know, you mentioned the ITC SRA atmosphere. Why is that atmosphere not in Punjab? I feel that, you know, from the, from the study that I've been doing, the, if you look at, say, 100 years ago, we'll go, so we're in 2019, go back to 1919. This is still the period of the months. The, the SGPC had not come into existence. The Gurdwaras were in control of the months. And in Amritsar alone, you had two, more than 200, not just Gurdwaras, but Dharamsalas, and uh, akaras and kind of these small um deras you know institutions the kind of religious institutions which were run by uh, various lineages you know of either nirmala or dasi or seva panthi or different sampradayas belonging to different sampradayas but the activity in these dharamsalas was okay one was uh, the idea of dharam dharmat giving langar providing accommodation for pilgrims to come to amritsar but also learning. So these, you had, you're talking about 200 or more mm. centers of learning in Amritsar alone. Yeah, speaks of the culture. And Amritsar was not as big as it was, uh, as, as it is now, back then. So that tells that tells me so much, like walking around some of the old city and asking some questions just this time when we were there last this last year. Um, it was like, oh yeah, this was a Dharamsala. Oh, that was also a Dharamsala. And in one little gully, you have like five Dharamsalas. Mm. And it, it, it builds a picture of like, it's like such a strong culture, you know, of education, you know, in these dharamsalas, Gurmukhi, Sanskrit, Farsi, Arbi, like I was just saying, all these languages would have been taught. Music was taught, um, you know, uh, all the, all through oral, oral tradition, you know, you had a, a guru and a chela, various chelas, you know, learning. And Darbar Sahib, in the Darbar Sahib, we have, we say, Bunge Jogu Jogu Atal, you know, Das. That has no meaning. There's no Bunge left. Yeah. What what Jugu Jugu Atal, you know? They're not we the SGPC uh, destroyed them around the time of partition. Mm. So what were those Bunge? They were again institutions around the Darbar Sahib, which were facilitating accommodation uh, as well as education in a lot of instances. So you had various schools for music in in and around the Darbar Sahib. That's a lost concept. Like who would no one would even think of that now? Uh, you have schools of Arabic and Sanskrit and Farsi in the Darba, in the Parkarma. And, you know, talking about hundreds of institutions of education in one city like Amritsar gives, gives you an idea. All these heads of these institutions, the Mahants, they were often trained in multiple disciplines, Ayurveda, um, languages, um, music. So it may not be that they were performing musicians, but they were trained in music and they understood music. And these were then the patrons that 
facilitated musical environments, you know. So you have um, mention of the Udasi, one of the Udasi Akharas in Darbar Sahib, uh, which had 70 musicians just in an Udasi Akhara in the, in the, out, on the 70. 70. Yeah, resident musicians. That's not Darbar Sahib. That's just one of the Akharas in the Prakarma. Wow. You know, so we have such, it's like a, when, you know, when I, when I go over this in my mind again, it's like, I just can't get over how a drastic a transformation it is. Yeah. To go from that to what we have today, to ab- absolute absence of everything. It's like, it's, it's sad, but we know why. You know, because that environment of this rich, you know, this rich environment where you had many institutions uh, which were educating, passing on culture, art, science, medicine, they all disappeared because the SGPC came in, reform came in, and it was seen that anything which is Western is good. So out with the old pedagogical systems, you know, oral tradition and the, uh, which was how monology had been passed down and which was uh, highly valued kind of systems. We were t- time-tested systems that yeah. lasted for centuries. Mm. And then you just, all of a sudden, it's like throwing the baby out with the bathwater. You know, you suddenly create a, oh, we need a democracy. We're, we're colonialized now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um, so the so the Gurdwara has changed hands. They became uh, democratically run. And the the those patrons who had the knowledge and who had the appreciation for the arts and the sciences and that, they all uh, were devalued, you know, at the same time. They were... Uh, uh, vilified they were made to look like uh evil people maybe there was instances of corruption which was then used to kind of vilify all the old school because if th- they were hereditary run you know and, and hereditary was against the kind of modern thing yeah um so that 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 fall of that environment really is and then along with the partition and the separation of musicians to who were mostly uh, muslim to lahore and pakistan and the move of hindu and sikh patrons to india it's like you, you, the, the social fabric which allows music in Punjab to flourish for centuries had been just torn apart. You take the patronage to one country and you take the musicians to the other country and it's like Punjab just flopped in music. And then Calcutta comes up, Bombay comes up. And this is why, for me, today, Punjab... Again, it happened in 1984. Sikhs and the Hindus, more divided. Music culture suffered. Yeah. So there's, there's many reasons, you know. I, I can go on, but you, you'll have to... Uh, no, I'll, be, I'll be regurgitating my thesis to you. Basically. Uh, <laughs> what the thing is, uh, we we touched on this like I think three days ago, three four days ago. We're chatting in the car, but my question is like, I first of all, I'm on the same page as you are with mm. this. But when the Singh Sabha movement happened, because that's a, that's you haven't mentioned that term, but at the end of the day, that's what you're talking about. Singh Sabha, yeah, yeah. Singh Sabha, the reform, yeah, the reform, this, yeah. So with the Singh Sabha movement. Um, the main kind of justification for the Singh Sabha movement is corruption, and you know, th- exploitation of, of Sikhs and this you know money that's been coming in from the Sikh Sangha and all this kind of stuff like that. Yeah. Um, is there any credit to that? And if because the thing is, Singh Sabha movement is a big movement. Yeah. Uh, and you can't really justify it by saying they just mm. did it for no reason. Yeah. I'm just thinking, from your research. Is there anything that you can see that kind of start to justify? Because I feel like there, the, you know, there needs to be something. You know, where there's no, there where was there's smoke, there's fire. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's 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 it feels unfair to kind of just say that no, Singh Sabha was completely wrong. Yeah, and we didn't need it. It ruined everything. I mean, yes, the ramification were, were worse than you could ever imagine. Yeah, agreed. But why did they? It's been hundreds of years, hundreds of years or whatever, right? And the mm. traditions been going fine. Mm. Suddenly, why did they want the what want the Singh Sabha movement? You know, it's got to do with with wanting independence and yeah. all this kind of stuffs kind of playing it together. Yeah. So, were there any bad and bad actors then? There was of yeah, like you like you're right to mention the point, and I've I've often tried to you know, you have to be neutral as a researcher, and so you can't just say like oh, the Singh Sabha were just bad, all they did was just bad. Of course, there was a reason why they did what they did. They felt what they were doing was right. But the people that were involved in the reform movement were the colonialized bracket of the Sikhs of the time. They were the colonialized and Sikhs. What were they trying to address from their perspective? So, in if you're colonialized, if you're a colonialized mind at the time, you're thinking that equality for all, education for all, 
your thinking your thinking will be like um very kind of a morality and an ethics based on a christian protestant morality and ethics because that's what the british were uh so the that sense of uh the attitudes and the um uh yeah yeah the attitudes of the time were becoming basically western christian protestant type of attitudes and that meant i just got an example in my mind so look, i think on on holy holy on the festival of holy um in the bazaar there used to be a festival uh, a four a four day music festival when people used to sing the songs of holy the play of colors and krishna and the gopis expect that they used to be out in the park right Where? yeah in the uh, guru ka bag which is just opposite the uh, langar hall langar hall, langar yeah. hall. So you wouldn't even you, you wouldn't, wouldn't even conceptualize that yeah, right? yeah, yeah. like people everyone goes there yeah. but people, when people walk past there because everyone's walked past that place yeah but you wouldn't even conceptualize yeah they in that spot the great names of hindustani music have performed bari gulam ali khan puluskar uh, omkarnath thakur all these all these guys you name it in front of the langar hall between langar hall and manjusri yeah 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 But no no one here has a clue that that even happened now anymore that's how the history just disappeared um but as an example four day music festival what sung is the the you know krishna and the gopis the play of what happens at holi colonial writers at the time there's a, a book uh about the gurdwara reform movement by uh, a hindu who was a lawyer a colonialized a kind of western very western educated west well spoken uh lawyer or high court judge or something like a whole prominent hindu um his name is ruchi ram sahni and he writes about the gurdwara reform movement saying that on holi licentious songs are sung in the durbar sahib you you transfer you you're taking this divine play of krishna you know who's a deity and the 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 gopis which is like a almost a metaphor for the soul and uh, the the souls you know or 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 humanity and atma parmatma you know this idea of many the the multitude of soul us, brides uh, yeah, yeah soul brides yeah. and the, and the, and yeah. the which is in good morning that groom. comes yeah, so many times it comes so you're taking that metaphor you 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 just ignoring that metaphor because you have no knowledge of it the indigenous education disappeared and you're just saying oh he's talking about love and playing and and it's it's, it's licentious it's, you know it's that's a very colonial british take on it's just a superficial take on what the poetry talks about mm. rather than looking at the subtle mystical uh, traditional interpretations of these poetry so that's the kind of attitude that i'm talking about yeah. and if 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 then someone all the colonial minds who were the ones that were going for this reform movement if they're all thinking like that then what can you expect yes everyone's going to believe like yes this is licentious we have to remove it yeah so these changes came like in their mind that was what was wrong that's wrong that is actually wrong so it's only wrong because they have the, the wrong attitude mm-hmm. and they have the, they lack they have ignorance they lack the understanding of how to understand it and so it's the same thing i think there was many instances where things small things were happening but because the indigenous uh pedagogical systems and the indigenous knowledge had been so uh, reduced and colonial knowledge and uh, attitudes had overtaken uh people started to misconstrue what was happening mm-hmm. and then say this needs to be reformed this is just wrong because you're you're looking at it from a totally new, new attitude now so there that was a big part of it on top of that i do think there were some bad things that had happened there was some corruption that had crept in also so one of the examples that i was mentioning to you the other day is that you know only after the british came which is again a colonial influence is that property became uh, you know land became uh the belonging of some person it was landed property the law changed before that land didn't belong to uh the if if you if you were a mahant of a certain dera or dharmsala or gurdwara you didn't own the land you were give you were put in place as a custodian if you made a mistake your patron would kick you out you know now these mahants became landed property owners mm. this is my i can do what i want here at night time you know and there was some stories spread about bringing dancing girls dancing into girls. the you know there was probably what one or two instances of that not thousands yeah. you know which yeah. is why it's made out to be sometimes like all the mahants were bad yeah. 
you know, BBS Bible Deep Singh says uh, there was only three months that were bad. According to the Bazurks, this is what he's held from his uncles and his uncles heard from their father. At that time, there was only three bad months. Yeah. That set the example, we need to remove the months. Yeah. And it wasn't just those bad examples. It was the fact that Mahants was hereditary, prone to corruption. In a Western colonial mindset, you can't have a hereditary system. Mm. What if his son is just an idiot? You have to remove him. Yeah. You need a democracy, which is flawed because we know a democracy is corrupt. D- today's democracy is all corrupt anyway. So, you know, this, this is the issues yeah. that we... But see, there's nothing at the same time, like I'm conflicted as well, because yeah. you and I both believe in a merit-based system, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like we don't believe in, you know, like by Bible he's he's always talking about his... Like his claim to excellence, a lot of it relies on his ancestors, um, like beating Rababis and in the what's the story? Who who are we talking about? This, uh, this is yeah, yeah. Uh, Baba Jawala Singh yeah, defeating Baba, by Moti Rababi. Yeah, so that kind of thing. At the same time, I don't agree with that. Like your each person's kind of um, they have to stand on their own two feet, and it's about merit. So. It's a bit, you're in the middle a little bit, right? Like, yeah, hereditary systems work, and they did work until then, but these guys were clearly trying to impose a new system. I don't know, it's it's all a bit grey. Yeah, it's, it's all it's, a bit grey. You know, What's definitely black and white is that we lost a lot, you yeah, know? And that's... Yeah. Uh, I don't think there were foreseen circumstances. They were unforeseen circumstances. When the things that were doing what they uh, did, what they did, they, they were trying to do the best according to their upbringing and their education. And they had no idea. They had no idea that this would have a, such a negative impact. This recorded, I was, I was watching an interview of Principal uh, Dial Singh of Rakhav Dili, Ganj. Dili, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and he says in the interview that when he was young, he heard uh, that at the time of the formation of the SGPC, there was a gathering of kind of the Mahapurk, the Mahatma, you know, whoever was there at the time, the Sants, they got together, major leaders within the Sikh community, spiritually uh, evolved characters within the Sikh community at the time, to de- have to discuss this issue. Because there was, it was a big issue. The Akali movement had come, there was, you know, they were doing protests, uh, sitting themselves at the Gurdwara, outside of Gurdwara, as the British police were getting involved. It was kind of messy. So there was a, a gathering of these kind of important people and spiritual figures within the Sikh community and the, what they all agreed upon is like if this democracy system comes into play in 70 years time it's going to be worse off that was the outcome of this uh, meeting of the great Sikhs at the time mm. the non-colonialized Sikhs they decided that look what you guys want you want reform but if you put in this democracy system in 70 years time it's going to be more west up than it is now so that was a, a kind of a, a button, if you like, that was given at the time. And no surprise, it manifested. Um, but this is, this is something that came out of Principal Diyasi, you know, what he recounted in an interview. And uh, yeah, I think it goes to show that some people may have understood what was going on at the time, but the, the people that were doing it didn't see that because they were so, so colonialist from birth. You know, you imagine from birth, you're going to actions in college here in Lahore or you're going to Kalta College in uh, Amritsar. Kalta College was founded by the Singh Sabha as well. It's giving a Western education. All of the, they just suddenly throw all the indigenous stuff as kind of subsidiary and not important because the colonials are the rulers and whatever they do is the best we want to become the, like what the rulers are doing, you know? Yeah. So I think it's just unfortunate. I don't think they were malicious. They, you know, I, I don't think I the Singh, get, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't see the Singh Sabha at, at all malicious. It's just really unfortunate that that colonialism and, you know, the colonial power didn't have... They had no idea what was happening. <laughs> it's not like... they Okay, they made uh, decisions what they thought was best as well at the time. You know, they didn't want the reform to come into play. But then the reformists got so powerful, it was like, okay, this seems to be the Sikh majority. We have, we have to go to the majority now. Because they didn't want the uh, electorate system to come to the Gurdas. They wanted to like, let's just leave it how, we, how it was when we came. You know, they didn't want the trouble of all this stuff. But because, the, because of colonialism, the education coming in and empowerment of... Western education, people start to challenge the colonial. That's why Britain had to leave, and and the colonial came, the colony came to an end at the end, yeah. you know, in 1947. Um, so they didn't foresee that either. No one was being particularly malicious. Neither the British people like to blame, they like to point fingers. Yeah. Scapegoat is this? It was the Singh Sabha. It was the British. No, yeah. that's no one's to blame. Yeah. It's just all unfortunate. Yeah. Ultimately, that's the way that I look at it. Yeah, but I mean, 
there was some propaganda at the time as well with the you know with the rumors about Abbas as soon as they'd come out from doing keith and other bar side they'd kind of gargle and then spit out Uh, metaphorically saying that yeah we we've, we've sung your gurbani but we're muslims and we can't sing this so here i'm yeah. spitting this out now that that those yeah. kind of rumors did exist they did exist so there again, was something happening yeah know? there was there was there would have been some cases but also you think okay if they were doing that and you know you've met rababis we've met rababis yeah. here in lahore yeah, they're we've, very we've we've tried to clarify that story with almost every single one yeah and a lot of them seem very kind of some more than others because they now are living in a muslim you know uh, republic islamic republic but um some of them still have a kind of a devotion which mm-hmm. is which is amazing you know in yeah. this after 70 years after partition with no sikhs around and no yeah. patronage um there was a there was a kind of there would have been a, a range within the rababis some had become more uh islamified but, but by the time of the singh sabha uh coming to the reform movement which is around 1920 to 2925 you already have 40 years of singh sabha being around and what the singh sabha were doing which is uh again i'm not saying it's malicious but it was intelligent use of print media so once the printing presses came into india they started to publish books 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 about uh what this reformed sikhi should look like so one like all the hum hindu nahi and these yeah hum hindu nahi uh and what was the other one um like gurmat philosophy all of this kind of books are like defining yeah. what is the guru centric yeah. kind of narrow narrow mm. na, na, you know um uh this this sikhi box which is great yeah. basically yes. you know um and in the process because the arya samaj had appeared the amdia muslim reform the muslim reform movement had appeared singh sabha had appeared there was as a result of colonialism uh increased division increased communalism so these religious communities were already kind of starting to like hold on you know we 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 Sikhs you are Hindus you know and you are Muslims yeah. so the rababis would have found themselves in a gray zone like well yeah. what are we you know <laughs> it's like yeah. where do we find ourselves and then you have writers of the singh sabha period publishing the stories of satta balwand how they made a mistake trying to kind of reinforce the idea that oh the rababis you know they they're the ones that made a mistake centuries ago yeah. but they made a mistake yeah one you know? two of them yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so that was published in many many books why why the gurbanis in in guru granth sahib like this yeah. if like, someone was redeemed it was them <laughs> yeah exactly so there was this agenda to show that look the rababis they're ultimately just muslims there's books published uh about how saying how muslims were the root f- downfall of all the music you know polisco and that was one of polisco's ideologies how the muslim stars were corrupt and they they didn't maintain the sanskrit <laughs> theory of music and the you know the hindu so aspect of it so onkar thakur like that as well yeah i heard a he story about oh, yeah, yeah yeah i heard a story about he was polisco's what was it was it school that school, school I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah so i heard a story that uh, one he wouldn't that's why he started keeping violin as a compliment okay because all the sarangi players were muslim oh god yeah and so he was a mad kind of you know uh, hindu extremist to us and so he would carry ganga jal with him everywhere mm. and then clean the stage after a muslim artist that now i'm coming and so he told one of his children that you go and then clean the entire stage chadna judna change karo they are ganga jal liya and then spray ganga jal on the yeah and that, <laughs> that that that's if that's happening just in hindustani music that's reflective of the division amongst communities mm, yeah. you know so that was there in the sikh community as well yeah. there are babis some of them more than others were feeling like well the Sikhs is now trying to push us out and say we're muslims and we're doing bad and we're spitting you know some of these may have been rumors some of them have been made true but as a response they might have started doing this you know yeah. they may have actually started doing that in response as well we can't say chicken or egg which came first you no, know yeah. but the result the, the outcome is because this division was being created in the colonial period yeah. for the first time this yeah. is the first time that yeah you know you have many counter stories of rababis that are waking up 2 a.m. Yeah. reciting sukhmani sahib and going to do asa yeah. divar and being more devoted sikhs than uh, than so, any other you know sikh that you could imagine exactly, you know yeah. so there was a spectrum yeah. within the rababis yeah. but i think we mustn't forget that the, the rababi community is and was its origins lies within the sikh religion it is yeah. you can't put it outside the sikh religion. it's it's no. within Yeah. Bai Mardana and all the descendants, all the later Rababis that came in, it's can't, you can't say, oh, they're just Muslims that were just kind of alongside no. a parallel track. No. no. 
no. their whole job, their whole livelihood for centuries. Yeah. God knows you're talking 17, 18 generations based on the kind of figures that we hear today. Yeah. Of people that just sank eat them. Yeah. You're saying they have no devotion towards what they it and doesn't make what, sense. No, it doesn't make any sense. And what you were saying is um when we were chatting that Gurbani came in sonic form. That's the actual form of Gurbani is yeah. when it's sung. That's how I relate to it. I mean, th- but it's, I, I agree with that. Yeah. The, it was sung first. And yeah. everyone, the mainstream of, of, of Sikhs also, they agree with that same concept. That Gurbani was sung. It didn't yeah. come down on a on a. On yeah, Bani Ai. Bani It's, know, it's, it's kind of a, 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 a subtle kind of revelation yeah, yeah. that came. And the story, you know, the the, the story, it's like, Manu Bani Ai, Yeah, then it came. That's, yeah, exactly. That story. So, he, all of Gurbani was sung. And then the written form came later to, to kind of, uh, there was a, as yeah, a that, secondary, yeah, as a secondary almost, a like parallel was, kind of Bauti tradition, Bauti where, tradition which yeah. led to the formation of the Granth, exactly. Granth Guru Granth Sahib, but you the know? guruship and the the actual Gurba, was given to the Gurbani, and yeah. Gurbani came in sonic form, is yeah. what you're saying, which you know, it's true. How can you deny that? Yeah. And then if you agree with that, that Gurbani came in sonic form. It came with it came in a it came they sung it yeah. and the Rabbi played yeah and when they sung it the it wasn't Rabbi's like Guru Nanak did a, did a no, part, part. no <laughs> yeah. they sung yeah and if they sung and then they sung with by Mardana it's a collective effort mm. and so from the very start the two kind of ropes are intertwined as they come down yeah and often in the Janam Sakis as well as as a kind of an additional reference to that you have uh, many Sakis where it says that Guru Nanak told by Mardana to recite one of his Shabads. Well, yeah. So he's specifically saying that I'm not singing, Madonna, please sing this for me. Yeah, you know. Aye, aye, aye. So we that's yeah. this is just more more evidence, you know, yeah. for that. Um, and that's like I was speaking. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And in terms of pluralism and kind of inclusiveness, my perception has changed since since this trip. That's been a big positive here. Yeah. You know, in concept, everyone agrees with that, right? We're, we're accepting, come on in, you have four doors of Darbar Sahib, mm. Christian, Muslim, Sikh, Hindu, everyone, these, these kind of things are always said, right? But in practicality, that's not true. It's not true. A woman can't do Kirtan in Darbar Sahib, yeah. let, alone, let alone someone from another. Yeah. Another do you know Seva, no Seva, nothing. No Seva, anything, right? Um, let alone another community to come in and do it. It just doesn't exist. It's, it's a lie that we're telling these days. But coming here, and then seeing Muslims sing with such devotion. Hi, 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 hi. With um, Tahir Iqbal, we heard Tahir Iqbal. It's not, about, like, it's not about the vocal excellence. It's not about that. Yeah. You're not looking for that. You're looking for surah that hits the soul. Yeah, yeah. And that's what you find in the Bobbies. Exactly. Yeah, in the old recordings, yeah, fine. You're looking for excellence as well. Yeah. But God, it's something in their voice. It's a texture in their voice. You, you can't reproduce it. Yeah. You know, you can, in my head, I'm listening to them, I'm notating everything they're doing, but it's not about notation. <laughs> yeah. It's beyond notation. Yeah. And it's for someone, I, I, I don't, I'm not, I don't focus, I don't dwell much on like the supernatural or anything like that, right? Mm. I don't dwell much on that. But goddamn, I just can't, disc- I, I can't justify it. I can't, I can't pin it down in terms of physicality. I don't know what it is. Yeah. But sitting down at Paitaru Singh Gurdwara, and by, for those that don't know, there's a disp- it's like disputed land right now. It was mm. very hard to film there. We filmed there. We filmed by Tahir Iqbal Singh there with his sons. Mm. And uh, it was very hard to film there. That we Basically, it's Shahidi son of Pai Taruji. And uh, that's kind of situated within this other building that's now been, that's now kind of been destroyed. And it still has old walls across, but the ceiling is gone. And right next to it is a... Um, tomb of a Muslim peer who was said to be Saimiya Mir's teacher mm. and it's a conflict because the Muslims are saying that this is a Gurdwara mm. that this is a mosque that you've built a Gurdwara in and that the Shidistan is actually the tomb of that Sufi that, that peer's son and the Sikhs are saying that no this is a Gurdwara and so the whole place is kind of a bit of a dire kind of circumstances the Sevadars are only there to make sure that it doesn't get taken over by the, the guys that are running the 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 tomb and stuff yeah. like that. And all over the walls next to the Gurdwara, it says, you know, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, and these kind of proclam- yeah. proclamation of... of the, but sitting in a place like that, which is a Gurdwara, but it's not a Gurdwara. It's a mosque, but it's not a mosque. Mm. It's definitely Gurbani, but they're definitely Muslims. Mm. And they're sitting there singing. And 
I, I put I put I did share a clip of it. Pandemia, pandemia, they're singing it. Hi, hi, hi. And the, the video can't do it justice. I can't wait for us to release the entire thing. Obviously, yeah. it's going to be edited and and released properly on the Madonna project. But it's been a different experience. Just sitting there, just looking at it, going, okay. It just shakes you up. What is Sikhi? Yeah. What is Sikhi now? Mm. You know, growing up in those closed environments where that box that was built pre-partition, mm. and now everyone. It's proclaiming this box has come down from Guru Nanak Dev Ji. It doesn't, it do, just that concept doesn't even exist. Yeah. And it was just hard, you know. You have to reconcile so many things. But at the same time, you can't deny what you feel when you listen to them. Yeah. You're a Drupad singer. Yeah. I'm a Kyal singer. Yeah. They're neither. Yeah. yeah. But what they sing touches the heart. Yeah. No, I mean, I can only echo exactly what you said because for me, when I first heard by Ghulam Muhammad Chand when he came to the UK. It was like, that's one of the few times that I've been touched by Keaton, genuinely, you know? And it was a, such a Keaton that I've never heard before and I've never heard since. You probably will. We, we probably will never heard. That, that, was, that, that time is gone. Like, I'll never hear that such a Keaton again. Oh, yeah. This is, you know, someone who's grew up as a kid doing Keaton in the bar side, you know? And that was like, there was some other barkat on, you know, on him. That was on older Rubbies, I think, historically, you know? Something. Yeah. Again, this is I think it's still there. Because like you're saying, even his son, Pai Muin, even uh, yeah. Tahir Iqbal, the way they sing will touch you like no Ragi is oh. touching me yeah. today, you know? Did Ragi touch you before? No. <laughs> we don't want Ragi touching you, man. No Ragi touching. No, that's... No, no, no. Is that come as part of the colonial? <laughs> <laughs> it's the priestly class. Yeah, priestly it's class. The priestly class. Yeah, yeah. So we don't want them to touch you. But I get what you mean. Yeah. I get what you mean. Uh, the singing touches you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's that's okay. Yeah. So I think it's definitely there's definitely something there. And it's, you can't like you say, is you can't describe it, you can't place what it is, you can't put it into words. You can only experience it. You can only experience it. And you, and you can't experience it necessarily in a recording either. Mm. Like you're saying. Not at all. I listen to recordings of Baigulam and Chanda and it doesn't, it doesn't it's like it doesn't have the same effect. No. It's it's something which is there when it's live, you know? Yeah. And um yeah, it's when well, a one thing which to try and put something into words. You know, I feel like when they're singing, they have an understanding of what they're singing, some to some degree, and they kind of mean what they're singing at the same time. You know, many times when you hear the modern ragis doing kirtan, it feels like they're just doing a duty, a job. They're getting a salary, which is another one of the downfalls of the transition from ragis, rababis to just the ragis. The ragis are always there as well. In the 20th century, moving away from this hereditary Rababi and Ragi system to just the Ragis, is that the Ragis became salary employed uh, thing. So it became professionalized. Ragi, being a Ragi became professionalized. And it was, if you see many of the Ragis, they, um, because no one, you know, music was kind of a little bit of a, a low status because the Rababis were low status uh, socially in the caste system. Who was who were the first Ragis to be trained after the arrival of the Singh Sabha and the removal of the Rababis, they were orphans, they were blind kids, essentially kids with no other hopes. That's really interesting. In life. That's really interesting. What, the typical, you see a guy with glasses, oh, Ragi. Yeah. It's, it, was so like a, it was like a, a, just a common thing because music was not a respectable profession for someone else, a normal person who would go and become a lawyer, a doctor, some, you know, something more re- respectable, but for who has no other hopes, oh, Ragi ban jayega, you know? And, you, that's what you see. You see the blind kids, and where was uh, the first institution which taught Kirtan, the Singh Sabha institution, the Central Khalsa Yatim Khana, for orphans. <laughs> yeah. That was the first school before the Shahidi College, which we visited when yeah. we were in Amritsar. Yeah. That was 1937, I think, made. Uh, or 1930s, anyway. Yatim Khana was 1904. Wow. Okay. It was an earlier institution. That was where the first Ragis were taught. Yeah. So it shows you. Uh, this idea of like, okay, one is ragi, ragi tradition was professionalized. And then the kind of, the way that they looked upon the Rababis was that let's just replace them with just the kind of marginal, margins of society amongst the Sikhs, you know? Yeah. So it's unfortunate, but that process of professionalization means that these kids growing up, it's just, it's just going to be a way that I'm going to earn my money in life. I don't have to care about it. Yeah. It gives me my bread and butter. 
Yeah, family. That was not what it was for the Rababi. No, family lineage, repertoire. Yeah, uh, c- like the the hopes of your lineage, kind of relying on you. Yeah, and the pride. The pride. Look at the Rababis. We're going to the Katri Baba where the Rababis yeah. live in Lahore. Yeah. Uh, since partition, uh, speaking to the Rababis and the pride they have for like of their elders and yeah, uh, so it's, was really, it was really touching, you know. Yeah, and that was an interesting experience. We should we should clarify a few things. We're we're sitting in Lahore right now. Yeah. In a place called Gadi Shohu. Show or something like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah, even know. yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it fully, but I think it's Gadi Show, and we're here as part of the Mardana project. We'll we'll see if we get into that. But basically, as part of the project, we were in Amritsar last year. Yeah, and there was a there's a place next to Amritsar that not many people know of, uh, called the Babi Oli Gali. Yeah, and it's near the Pasia Pasia Ola Chow. Pasia Ola Chow. Yeah, and so we visited there and we shot there as part of the documentary film that we're making as well, and then. That's where all the Rababis lived. And we actually met, met an elder there that remembered all the, mm. the Rababis living there. Mm. What was interesting was we met some kind of really youthful and, and kind of, uh, I don't know, these, these young Sikhs in their 20s, max early 30s. I was so proud that they're building a new Gurdwara, mm. but they had no idea they were destroying the Rababi only mm. And again, it comes back to that thing where it's like malicious intent doesn't exist. It's mm. just ignorance. Mm. They don't know. But basically, this they all lived in this place together as a community in Rabab Yawli Gali. Yeah. And then post-partition, they all moved on this side into a place called Kachri Baba. And we vis- visited Kachri yeah. Baba as well. So we shot at Rabab Yawli Gali and then we found Kachri Baba and then we went into Kachri Baba and then we visited Kachri Baba as well. And the place is not in a good good place. It's yeah. pr- exclusively Rababis live there. Yeah. And it's it's a really really poor neighborhood, you know. Yeah. Um, no one's. You can see there's garbage everywhere. Uh, the p- entire place smells. No one works there. Everyone's just kind of sitting in kind of ancestral. It's it's kind of like a slum, but just like a one. I don't even know. If yeah, you one up from a slum. One it's, up from a slum. Know, yeah, exactly. It's it's just a very poor. Um, yeah. Block. You know. It's it's. Uh, they, no it's very not, humble, very humble. Yeah, no they have no luxuries, no, no facilities. Yeah, and by Nasira's family lives there. Yeah. By Tabba's family lives there. By Gulham and Shagan's family is there. All these families are there. It's great lineages all live in this really poor area. And so we had an opportunity to meet with all of them. And, you know, they were, we met Hamad Ali Bela's daughter. Mm. And she was talking about her dad waking up with this again with a mixed identity. Mm. She was like... Yeah. And there's this thing here because everything's an oral tradition, there's like Lahori Gurbani going around. That's that's the name that we've coined for it. Where they say Gurbani, but it's always, you know, they're missing Lagamatra or they're messing up a few words. Word and it's, it's, it's all done in, in a sense because it comes in an oral tradition. Yeah. And in a, instead of Asaki Var, she kept calling it Asaki Avaz. <laughs> She was like, Swere, swere utke namaz baadu, asa ki awaz And she's remembering it with such fond memories. Yeah. And this is a Muslim. Yeah. So the, she's recalling a Muslim waking up doing namaz mm. and then singing asa ki mm. in Lahore. Yeah. And these were the Rababis. Such a mixed identity. Yeah. They weren't Muslim and they weren't Sikhs, but they were Sikhs and they were Muslims. Yes, exactly. And... Um, then she's like, they used to sing, Satguru Tumuko Kaaj Savare. Yeah. And so this is again a Lahori good concept of what I'm just going to, I'm terming a Lahori Gurbani, but just tells you the old tradition, how strong it was that this this person has no connection to Gurbani as all well, Sikhs. She's the grand, you know, granddaughter of someone who was engaged Pre- in the same yeah, tradition, yeah. pre partition. But the granddaughter knows that what Asakivar is, mm. or Asaki Avaz is. <laughs> yeah. She knows these Shabbats because they used to sing them. Yeah. And then she would go on and recall because we asked her, we were like, okay, so did your did your grandfather have memories of pre-partition? Mm. And she's like, how can I see halwa puri, amre sardi halwa puri ni kitan Yeah. And then she's remembering my granddaddy used to say, "Give me amre sardi a pinia, ki odiya baniya." She's like, "Ethe the teel diya khlai jande ya, taiy o the tagde on this." And all these, you know, kind of fond memories and it just kind of. It hurts sitting mm. with these people. Yeah. It hurts because I, f- I feel like we have, it's been a bit of both. They're not carrying forward the tradition anymore, but they're only not carrying it forward because they're getting no support to carry it forward. Yeah. Um, and so it's just like a, a spiral and it leads to, you know, worse and worse conditions for both. We lose the culture. Yeah, yeah. 
and then lose a the livelihood. Yeah, yeah. It's like the few Rababis that have uh, or are trying to maintain some singing of Shabbat Kirtan. Yeah, there, we should in, name them. We should. Yeah. One is by Muin. By Muin. And by Tahir Iqbal. By Tahir Iqbal, and then Inamali, who's singing a little yeah, bit. Yeah, Inamali. And, and there's the other like Naim and. Uh, so yeah, by, yeah, by Naim, by Sir Faraz, yeah. Hussein Lal. Yeah, the main though has to be Tahir Iqbal, the yeah. most active. Yeah. And and so, by Muin. By Muin and by Tahir Iqbal have yeah. to be the the main ones. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just just hearing them. Um, is already. You feel like oh, we're missing out, you know. Yeah. And th- this is th- take Tahir Iqbal for example, someone who's been just started composing Shabad Kirtan again. Uh, for he's not since, even singing in traditional compositions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's singing his own compositions since the last six months. He was very honest with us about that. He was not trying to say, oh, yeah, our bazurgo ki bandish hai. No, he's saying very straight, this is a uh, apni composition. Hai. And he, he's, he's had a bit of support from a, a friend and a, patron, a local patron for him who's encouraged him to let your rabbi be you should do the Kirtan, you know, you'll, you'll maybe with well, the opening of the Kartapur corridor, there'll be more Sikhs coming, it'll be a good opportunity, you know, revive this tradition. But just hearing six months of effort of what Rababi is doing, it just like wipes the floor clean with wipes, <laughs> yeah, that's the, of all the ragis, yeah. which are, are trained, trained, yeah, you know, from a young age yeah. to go into this as a profession, which is why I think is a problem. Um, there's many problems, we know all the problems, there's many problems with that, the, yeah. the kind of training and the yeah, yeah, yeah. attitude of the whole thing, but. It shows what we're missing, basically. Yeah. That's just one example, you know. By Muin just learnt, uh, you know, the Shabbats from his father and sings them with such uh, wholeheartedness. It just feels like singing it from the heart, you know, yeah. which we just... And I think the Sikh community has, has been missing that and is missing it since that time. Since the Rababis left, yeah. we've... we've Okay, there have been some... By someone sing Ragi, you know, there was there were some really great Ragis yeah. of that. But again, of that period when the Rababis were still kind of yeah. hanging over and just left. So um, we're miss- we're, we've been missing out. And for me, with Girtan being Gurbani, what we're talking about, the sonic form, you know, Gurbani is everything. This is what we consider as the Guru for us. It is It lies at the heart of what we call Sikhi. Whatever we call the Sikh tradition, Gurbani is what brings it all. It's the focal point. It's around that everything else relates. Never matter what you wear, what you do, you know. Gurbani is the, is the focal point. Gurbani is music. We've established that. And to have this loss of the real music, for me, Sikhi has been missing its kind of heart oh, yeah. since yeah. That, that, that partition and that loss the, and the kind of reform of Sikhi in the last 50 to 70 years, you know? Yeah. And that's what hits home when you hear just the Rababis uh, here and... Uh, yeah. It's, it's, which is, but for that to come into people's eyes and come into it's kind of, we're kind of a part of the reason why I'm on this project. And I'm sure why you're this, in this, in the, involved in this as well is kind of giving people that punch in the face yeah. that you've been missing your heart for the last. That's exactly what know? it feels like. Yeah, it, it feels like an old. It feels like it feels like you're getting reunited with an old family member. You know, yeah, that's yeah. what it feels like. Yeah, it feels like you're coming home. Yeah, it's like where has this been? Mm. What are you? It feels like you've been forcing yourself uh, to like something else when this is all you needed since yeah. day one. Yeah, and this is just residue of the Rababis, To yeah. be honest, yeah. this and isn't it, a real deal. Never gonna, we're never gonna, we're never going to be able to experience the Rababis of. Come on, hundreds. man, be a, bit, a little bit optimistic. <laughs> no, I, there is a hope, you know, because by Muin's grand, uh, by, by Muin's son singing real well. Yeah, and my thing is, I'm gonna go back, uh, and I want to. Uh, we got to figure out a way to to pe- become patrons for these kids. Yeah. These kids, these kids have that the blood. Yeah, they they need to sing, and they're singing. They just need to see that their singing will be appreciated. Yeah, and so we need to figure out a way, like a you know, what we were saying adopted a bubby or something. <laughs> yeah. you know, we we identify the guys that have talent, and only the guys that have talent. Yeah. And 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 within in those families, which the devotion is. Still there yes. because that was why I was being just a kind of negative, positive, pessimistic kind of note of it is that I think as a result of being here and the adaptation process, many of the Rababi families have kind of like severed the ties with Sikhism and the kind of devotion that the elders had. They've kind of like yeah. left it and, and, and to kind of fit into society here, they've had to show that oh, I'm a devoted well, Muslim. And I met several Rababis before you guys came 
in the country as well that were like, yes, I'm a Rababi, but I'm a, I'm a Muslim. Yeah. And they were like, he's a Sikh. He actually pointed to another Rababi, in the, you know, who's still a Muslim, but he's like, he's a Sikh. Oh. Because he, he was pointing to someone who had devotion for the Gurus, right. you know, and someone who was still wearing a Qara because his elders wore it. And he still had the, uh, that. There's a few of the families which still have that kind of devotion. And towards Guru Nanak specifically. Towards Guru Nanak, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, or Guru Ramdas sometimes, you know. Yeah. So um, I think that, that the sad thing is that the devotion has been lost amongst some of the Rababis. And how can you reinstill devotion? No, you, it's yeah. very difficult, yeah. I think. And some damage has been done and we, we yeah. can't and, overcome that. But yeah. there is plenty of hope. Yeah. You know? But even the Rababis that are singing now, they don't have a knowledge of Guru Ramsar. They think, we've had weird conversations where these Rababis that are singing so beautifully, you think Shah Hussain is in... Bulle Shah. And Bulle Shah yeah. is in Gurbani. Shah Hussain is in Gurbani. I saw one of these, one of these Rabbis tell his kid that that's the grant. It has Shah Hussain, the, the Shah Hussain. It has Bulle Shah that we sing. And I was just yeah. like, all right, you're singing beautifully. Yeah. But you can't even, how do you start to teach them about that? You, yeah. That's just something that comes within the culture and that, but that cultural knowledge is... And it's, you know, that's the result of the 70 years of separation. Yeah. You know, being totally well, isolated from the that, community. Eh? It all ends up just boiling down to that. It Reformation is, yeah. and, and partition, yeah. it seems. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to miss on the fact that we're, we're here for the project. Mm. And we need to talk about the project. Yeah. Um, so you started doing research and basically we're here for the Mardana project. Yeah. We had a larger team here, but slowly people have had to go. Um, and but then there were two. We're, we're the only two that left here. I'm leaving tonight. You're here. You're still here for a little bit. You're continuing the research. Um, but basically, tell us a little bit about the Mardana Tell me, you know, let's talk about the Mardana project. Tell yeah. me a little bit about the project. So, the project evolved after I'd done my master's. I started the PhD, and in the first year of my PhD, I realized there was a need. I, I need to go to India to do the research and to go to Pakistan as well, because a large part of the history is it, this is Punjab. You know, we're in Punjab. We're in Lahore, whether you're in Amritsar, you're in Punjab. So, being a historical uh, research topic. So my PhD thesis is around the influence and interactions between Gurbani Kirtan and uh, Hindustani music between uh, 1857 and 1947. So that colonial period in Punjab, looking at how music, particularly Kirtan and Hindustani music have developed and interacted and what kind of changes happened at that time. So being a historical project, I need to come, I need to come here be on the ground, go into uh, archives, the libraries of uh, public libraries, university libraries, wherever historical books and manuscripts may be kept that have relation to uh, either the running of the Rabah Sahib or Gurdwaras or um, books written by musicians, you know, on music or whatever, you know. So there was a need to come and do the f conduct the field work, which is going to uh, provide the... Um, the substance to the PhD that requires funding. I had no source of funding. It's very difficult to get funding in the UK for uh, humanities-based uh, PhDs. You know, uh, music, arts is kind of much more difficult than something like engineering or medicine or something like that. You know, so um, I had the idea. Let's just do a crowdfunder. I'm sure there's enough people within the Sikh community globally that would see some value of this research into the history of Kirtan during this period um, and that way I could raise the funds and get out there and do the work. As part of the crowdfunder I started to think well there has to be some benefit and I'd been thinking anyway that okay a PhD is all very good, it's, it's very uh, niche, very narrow and it's ultimately aimed to leave a legacy in the academic world. Not Your, your layman's not going to read a PhD thesis you know, unless he's someone with academic interests. So I thought there has to be some kind of bridge anyway, because my uh, kind of drive to do the research is then to anyway afterwards go and educate and spread the, the research and educate people about this is the tradition that we're talking about, you know, and you guys have no idea about it. So I've, I've always had this idea of make, making this bridge, you know, between the research and getting the research out to people in a kind of digestible format. So in the process of, con you know, uh, building this crowdfunding campaign to raise funds for the research, I thought let's let's 
let's put a documentary together. Let's let's say that we're going to deliver a film that will raise awareness about the issues that we're discussing in the PhD um, around Sikh music and the decline in particular. Um, and that will be a deliverable. That will be something which people are getting out of it. If, if you're going to put money in, people want to see something out. So it was kind of like a, an intelligent way, if you like, to raise funds and um, uh, at the same time achieve a goal which I wanted to achieve anyway. So me and Jasdeep, uh, Jasdeep, who's you know my partner in crime, if you like, with the, the research over the last five years and um, and in music as well, we decided to put this campaign together, and um, it was a great success. You know, in the summer of uh, two thousand. 18 uh we raised i can't remember the exact figure but it's over 22 23000 pounds um to do just that to to bring uh me in particular for a long period out to india i was in india for 5 months in the end and i'm here i'm here in pakistan for uh one and a half months finally um to do this tedious work in archives and meeting people and conducting interviews with where I need to uh, for the PhD specifically, as well as taking a short period out to do specific filming for the production of a film, you know. So, um, and this is where, you know, you've, you've been brought into the project because gratefully you agreed to, uh, you know, take on the role of the executive producer and uh, donate a significant, you know, chunk to, uh, to, towards the, the project. So um, this is this is what gave birth. And you know, I, I, me and Justeep had this idea of the Maradona project. Anyway, since we started the research, you know, we wanted to do. We had bigger aims. We wanted to, like what you're doing in Australia, teach people uh, practically, uh, but also educate educate people about the history and what what the tradition was and what's been lost. You know. Yeah. So we had this bigger aim of the project, and we had we we come up with the uh, the name Maradona project uh, between us and a few. Uh, our kind of other patrons that support us yeah. in our initial work. Um, so, yeah, this is where the Madonna project yeah. came into being, mm. and um, yeah, it was it's, it, so far. It's been a you know great success. You guys have come on board, been really kind of good energy and powering through, bringing bringing Nathan on board, yeah. um, which has been a big bonus. I didn't expect, you know, I, I didn't have in my mind when when we were uh, thinking about the the film yeah. that it was going to be, you know, such a, a an award winning. You know, documentary maker and getting something out on Netflix yeah. and that, and that kind of the level where it should be really because yeah. this is a story which is yeah. I think can tell a lot about division and the damage yeah. you know and what gets lost yeah. and it's just one example but it's an example which is pertinent to the Sikh community and the whole of humanity as well yeah um, so that's and I mean I think you've given a really nice description of the project and when when I saw the crowdfunder pop up I don't know just see was but I saw your at that point, I didn't know just I know I saw your face. Yeah. And I remembered our encounter from 2013. Yeah. And just from that small encounter in 2013, Indabreeth and I had a had a kind of uh, like a positive memory. Yeah. And it was a positive experience, and that we had that kind of like a certain level of trust. Yeah. In your approach, and obviously we didn't know you as a researcher back then, mm. but I'd been following you a little bit since then. So I called Indabreeth when I saw that. Card from the guy, and I was like, in the you know, like, you put your money where your mouth is, kind of thing. I, we we should get involved in this project as well. And then we we both collectively kind of came and got involved. We're really happy to be involved in this project. And then when we found out about the documentary bar, I know you said that you know the crowdfunder was for twenty thousand pounds. Yeah. Right. Um, when we got involved, we were like, if we're going to make a documentary, we need to make it well. Mm. You know, we don't want to stitch together pieces from the archival footage that's been taken. Because every interview that you conduct, you're, you're recording it in HD or 4K yeah. for your own archival you know, research. And then that part of the archive would also be released later on. But you don't want to just stitch together that and make a bunch of talking heads. Yeah. And so we started thinking, you know, we if you want to do this, you want to do it properly. Mm. And so we were like, even if the bl- budget blows a little bit, we need to get someone on board. Hmm. And we started looking and then we did a whole process where, where filmmakers started, a few filmmakers actually were interested and they lodged and they, now they lodged their kind of application that they did their research. This is a Bobby. They kind of lodged, someone lodged like a 12 page application, four page. We had a few of those where they were, hmm. 
there were genuine interest in, amongst filmmakers to get involved. Mm. And um, my wife, Kieran, she's she's brilliant at this stuff. Yeah, yeah she's she, really, she, she did a really good job yeah, yeah. in uh, yeah. bringing these guys in board and managing that process. Well. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's a beast when it comes to this stuff. She's a beast generally. Yeah. But like she she's like a... As in... As a person, she's like a monster at to-do lists. Mm. That's what she's like. So, and she she gets stuff done, and she gets stuff done well. Yeah. But so she she knew Nathan from her work because she works in advertising, and she's been working in advertising for like fifteen years or something like that. So she's she's really kind of steeped in that in that environment. And she had worked with Nathan, and she's like, Nathan is your guy. Mm. So we'll get in touch with a few, but if we can get Nathan, mm. he's brilliant. And so then we got Nathan on board. Nathan, you know, agreed to do it. And then he's really just charging us an honor- honorarium, and he's being very kind because he's he's the kind of guy that looks for stories. Yeah, and that's what you want for a person because this is a story to be told. Yeah. And so when he, you know, in the initial discussions, we were explaining to him, Nathan, this is the story. This is what's happened with the people of Punjab. This is what happened with the partition. This is what happened to the music of Punjab. And he started to get invested in that story a little bit. Mm-hmm. And once he was invested, he was he just wanted to be part of it. So we're so happy to have him on board. Yeah, absolutely. and he's coming. Mean, He's got heaps of that. He was nominated for the Grammys. Yeah. And he's so professional in terms of his... And he's so easy and, and laid back in terms of his approach. He just mixes it with everyone. So that is not part of the... People don't know this, but that needs to be, people need to know this. That, that 20,000 hmm. pounds... And in the fundraiser, any of my travels or in the priest travels aren't being covered. Yeah. So we're not picking at the fund here. Hmm. The fund is reserved for the researchers. Yeah. And the anything to do with filming. Yeah. We don't have a sound guy on board. Nathan's a, a beast. He's doing the sound by himself. Yeah. All right? Yeah. He, to save us money. Yeah. And uh, he's charging a minimal amount for that. Yeah. And all of our cost, it's not like we've just come here and we're tipping everything out of the budget. All of our cost is separate from that. That in mind, and we're not staying at five-star hotels. No, no, no. Right? This is, you're staying at Al Safina in, yeah. in Gadi Shaw. Right? Yeah. There's a, there's a host of five-stars around the corner. Yeah. But this isn't a five-star. And... Um, that in mind, that twenty thousand pound is not efficient. Is not enough. No, it's I not think enough. We, we, you know, and because the, the documentary, the film, the film project has grown in scope. You know, yeah. We're talking about Netflix, and we're talking about. Well, I mean, I don't think we should throw those words around. Yeah, but we're, a, we're talking about we want you know, something go, which is of Netflix quality. Netflix quality. quality. This is definitely the quality of. Um, we don't know the distribution. Film. Yeah. We don't know the distribution, yeah. but so we shouldn't throw those words around. But it's definitely the quality of like film film festivals and documentary film festivals, this is definitely going to go in there. Yeah. That's a name. Yeah. It's going to be a short film. Yeah. Maybe 20 minutes is the number that we're bouncing on right now. Yeah. But it'll be short and it'll definitely go into those kind of um, domains. Yeah. No, 20,000 pounds is not a budget. <sighs> no, you, man. Not for, ne- just a, let, a, let a, you know, just for a film alone. Yeah. That's not a budget that you think about. No. This is, we're let talking about, research. we're talking about five months of research. It was six and a half months of yeah. research, you know, included, thrown in there as well. Yeah. Um, it's uh, yeah. yeah, and we're not we're not we're not asking for more funding. Yeah. We're do, we're still we're doing this out of pocket, but it's more than twenty thousand. The cost of the the filmmaker and the cost of the editor that's yet to be hired. That we're next week we're having meetings with editors to hire them is all on top. Um, but this is an exciting project. Yeah, you know this never been done, and the reason we're doing it is for exactly what you were saying. One is it's backed by research. That's the core of this project. At the end of the day, the, what we want people to do from the documentary is we want them to garner interest and, and go read your research. Yeah. And as part of the project, what we want to do is we want to capture these stories, build a narrative that is, you know, not build a narrative, we want to represent the existing narrative. You're not yeah. making something up. But basically, your PhD is come, going to come out of this. We're going to find a medium through which we can deliver these things. Yeah. But... The deliverables that for, for everyone is one we're going to have the PhD, which is the crux of it. Right? Yeah, yeah. Your people that are supporting this project are supporting research. Yeah, that's what they should. They should. They should be. They should take pride in that. Yeah, that they're supporting research into Gurbani Kirtan. Yeah, that's the main thing. That's why we're. That's why we're happy to support it. Yeah, that's, and I'm sure that's why everyone else is happy to support. It. We're supporting research into Gurbani Kirtan. So that's the soul of this entire project. Your research. Yeah. Then the kind of next circle out is. The footage, all the footage, footage that is being collected, and then the next circle is the documentary. That's the first point of contact. Yeah. So the documentary will be, will you know, we're, we're literally meeting with editors next week to start finalizing those things, yeah. and then date. 
and then after that the next point of contact is hopefully from that they're interested into and they want to dig further into archival footage and so we will be releasing longer archival footage and we'll be doing that in two parts one is the archival footage in longer form and then you will also be sorting out that archival footage yeah in terms of digestible tidbits and those yeah. tidbits are going to be chosen based on your research because people in the longer form people will tell their story yeah. but if their story is not validated by his by your historical research it will still be released but it won't be it won't it won't feature in the tidbits that are that will be yeah. formulated but that's a long term kind of yeah it's, it's, it, that's the next step you know once the i've written the thesis yeah we want you know i always had in mind this this again part of the bridging process bringing this research to the layman in a different easily digestible format having this online resource you know yes so that people can have something they can go to yeah. they can watch videos they can uh read family trees and under and learn about give them in a in a more accessible format because not everyone's going to want to dip into a phd thesis you know no. and read to we want people. them to we want them to work backwards from the documentary yeah into the archive yeah. the archive into those videos and yeah. then eventually into into the you know whatever website we create that's going to also have it's going to kind of picturize all the family trees that you're working on yeah authentic authenticate all the lineages that are bubbies and ruggies and all that kind of stuff mm. and then lead them backwards into into all of this research that's yeah been done. yeah so no that's 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 the aim yeah so that's pretty much i mean for those that don't know that's pretty much the the madonna project yeah and i think i think that's a good note to end on i think yeah. we've been going for like almost i don't know a while <laughs> a while now but i mean time flies with yeah. these conversations I'm, and i really enjoy especially because you're coming from a point of research and because you're coming from a neutral perspective. Yeah. No, so true. I always enjoy speaking with you on these yeah. on these subjects. I, we didn't touch on music at all. <laughs> we didn't. You know, so much yeah. I think we could get carried away if we got into music. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if we don't call it a, a stop here, we'll start talking about music and then if Drupal sorry, if Drupal's better or if Cal's better. I think that's <laughs> yeah. a perpetual there's a perpetual, perpetual banter that we we'll Perpetual carry banter that yeah. keeps going. Um, yeah. but I'm sure I, I'm sure Gunnar is saying like proper cow <laughs> proper cow yeah well we know that he didn't think cow or drupal <laughs> that's what we established yesterday yeah okay let's leave it there that was good that was a good chat nice one.